Hello. So in the previous episode, we used the gem geocoder to find longitude and latitude coordinates of different locations based on their address. So we had a list of locations and uh, we had an address of each of them. And uh, we used the gem geocoder in the model. So we had location.rb and whenever the address was added or changed to a location, it would uh, calculate the longitude and latitude based on this address. And here we had this latitude and longitude populated by the geocoder gem. And then we use the Mapbox uh, static images API in order to uh, have a static image uh, map of uh, the location of uh, each of our locations. So here you see there's this address and it's placed here on the map. This one is here and so on for each of our locations. And in this episode, we are going to explore a new gem that was released just a few days ago by Andrew Kane, MapKick, that uh, also uses this Mapbox uh, Maps API to allow us to comfortably and easily place lots of uh, markers on the map and uh, make the map really dynamic. And uh, using this uh, MapKick gem, we can actually create an interface as Airbnb does. Let's uh, have a look. Let's uh, try searching, for example, uh, Paris. Yeah, so using MapKick, we can create this kind of map where we have uh, lots of locations. We can click on uh, one of the locations and see the details and so on. And uh, that's what we are going to try to do in this episode. So uh, here is our already existing application that has already geocoder installed and that already has a few locations with their latitude and longitude. And we are going to use the gem MapKick to try to display these locations on a dynamic map. So let's start by installing the gem MapKick. I'll go to the gem file, add the gem and run bundle. Now it offers a few different options of installation based on the CSS and JS uh, compiling uh, provider that you use. The default trail 7.1 is import map, so I'm going to use it for this application. I'm going to go to config uh, import map.rb and here I'm going to add the map kick bundle. And also in application JS, I will uh, add the map kick bundle. Okay, and another really important thing that uh, I can't uh, stress uh, on less, uh, we should uh, add our Mapbox access token that you get when you create a Mapbox account. The gem absolutely relies on this uh, Mapbox uh, API token, so you have to create a Mapbox uh, account. Uh, and I'm going to take this uh, variable and set it, uh, either you can do it in application.rb, here you could just say and Mapbox API token and here there will be your token. Or better, you will uh, go to initializes inside config and create a new uh, initializer mapbox.rb. Here you would set up the end of access token. And here you could uh, add a token like this. So I will copy mine and I will paste it here. Okay, and now I think I've done all the initial setup. So let me try using the gem and displaying a map in our application. So I'm going lower and here we have uh, the main part of the gem. Here I can uh, try to copy this and this JS map code with latitude and longitude will display a map and it will have a marker with this latitude and longitude. Let's uh, try doing that. I'll go to uh, lo let's say index page of locations and try displaying a map. I'll refresh. And here the map is displayed. So the gem is installed correctly and uh, a marker on the map is visible. I can try zooming out with my trackpad or with my mouse and it kind of works. Okay, looks fine. Uh, let's try seeing some different options that we can use uh, with this gem. So you see we can uh, either manually have uh, latitude and longitude or we can pass a path. This is really important and we'll come back to this later. We can pass a label, tooltip and so on. Let's uh, try uh, adding a label and a tooltip. So I'll go back here. I will say label equals uh, my home and tooltip equals hello. Let's uh, refresh and you see when I hover, not when I press, but when I hover, we have this hello. Looks quite fine. 
Let's uh, see some more options. So we can give an ID to this element. We can set uh, custom width or height so that it isn't uh, full width by default. Let's uh, try doing that. Just be sure not to do it inside the data array. So this is our data array. And then we have uh, different uh, other options. Okay, let me refresh and you see now the map is not full width. We can also change the default color of the markers. So it is red by default. You can change it uh, based on your brand color. Then uh, we have the options of uh, changing the style. So uh, our map box maps have uh, a lot of uh, different styles. Let's uh, try seeing a few of them. You see we have map box streets, map box dog, light. And uh, here you can actually see the names of the styles, Mapbox Satellite. So this way you would be able to change the style of the maps. Let's uh, try setting a style. Let me refresh and see if anything changes. Yeah, you see the style has changed. Looks quite fine. And we can also change the default zoom level. Let's uh, try doing that. So uh, I'll refresh and you see, well, it was 15 by default. I, if I make it 10, then we'll see much more. Uh, if we make it, let's say 20, it will be extremely close. So it will be 15, for example, by default. Okay. And uh, another really interesting option would be uh, to make the tooltips not hoverable. So if you want a uh, user to be able to click on a tooltip, uh, on the contents of a tooltip, then you should make it not hoverable. So uh, let's try doing that. I'll make in the tooltips not hoverable. I'll refresh and you see now when I hover above the marker, it is not hoverable. But now we have the option of making the tooltip clickable. We are going to use this later. Okay, now uh, we've seen a few different options for uh, the params that we can use in this JS map. Now let's make this map uh, visible for each location. So uh, let's just say uh, we'll copy this main code and uh, display the JS map for each location separately. So the latitude will be location.latitude, longitude will be location.latitude longitude label will be let's say uh, location dot name and tooltip will be location dot address let's see if it works okay there was a syntax uh, error okay here i guess let's refresh and here we have this uh, kind of map under each location. So here we have one location, here we have the other location, and it seems to be uh, working. And you see when I hover, then we see the address of the location. Okay, and what if we want to make these addresses actually clickable? So uh, uh, when we click on the address, then we go to the locations page. Well, again, we're going to make the uh, tooltips uh, not hoverable, but uh, make them HTML. So I will add the uh, tooltips hover false html true then uh, yeah again i will add this uh, width so that it isn't full page it annoys me a bit okay and uh, yeah the zoom uh, is okay i will uh, also add uh, an option to zoom in and zoom out it should be somewhere here uh, so yeah i'm going to add the controls so controls true let's say uh, controls true and I'll comment out the first map we're not going to use it for now okay so here we have the controls we can uh, click on the location and see the address let's make this address uh, clickable so to make it clickable I will actually make it a link so a good way would be maybe to go to locations helper and create uh, a HTML link to location we'll make it as a helper and uh, we'll say link to location dot uh, address uh, location path at location 
and let's uh, replace this location address with HTML link to location from our helpers. Let's refresh the page. And now I click on the location and here we have it uh, as uh, a link. I click the link and we are redirected to this page. Let's make it uh, a link that opens in a new page. So I will say target blank. I will uh, go back to locations. I will click on the location once again and you see it opened in a new tab. So it looks quite nice. Let's also add some kind of style like, like uh, style and say color green. And you see the link is green now. So now you're free to add any more styles as you wish. For example, uh, no, I think it's enough. Okay, now let's go to the next step, uh, displaying all the locations on one map. It's going to be another really interesting thing to do. So I'll just uh, copy this uh, JS map, comment it out. We don't need it anymore right now. And uh, the way we did it here with this uh, static latitude and longitude, we're going to pass in a path instead. So for the data, we will pass locations path and the format will be JSON. So let's refresh and see if it works. Yeah, you see, all the locations have been displayed on the map. Let's uh, try to zoom in a little bit. And uh, you see they are not really displayed, displaying anything except of the map markers. We don't have the name, we don't have the tooltips, uh, and so on. So uh, we would need to customize our JSON a bit. You see, we go to locations path format JSON. It uh, brings us to the locations controller. Here we have the index action and uh, we have the in our views the response with, with HTML and the response with JSON. And it responds with a location JSON partial, this partial. Here it has a name, address, latitude, longitude and so on. So we are going to customize this, this URL a bit. We will say json.title equals location.name json dot uh, uh, tooltip uh, will be our html link to location and from uh, this extract i will leave just latitude and longitude and i will remove this uh, url so here we have four params that we can actually pass let's refresh and see if uh, it works Okay, so uh, the clickable part works, but I uh, don't see the name being displayed. Let's uh, see why. So here we have, okay, it is label, not title, but label. Let's try once again. And here we have the labels displayed. Let's... Uh, zoom in a bit and uh, it's quite nice yeah the labels are displayed so if you can click on any of the locations and uh, be brought to the locations page looks quite nice and uh, here we are done with this uh, map kick gem basically it allows us to display and customize uh, our uh, maps and data on a map and here again, we passed the locations path format JSON and we updated the JSON uh, data that we are actually uh, rendering. But uh, there is still a problem that I would like to solve within this episode. You see, uh, on this map, we have uh, all the locations uh, listed. And uh, what if we want to search uh, locations within some distance? For example, I will search within can. And uh, in the uh, HTML results, I can see, now I see only the results inside can, so three locations. But on the map, I still see all. Let's try once again. I'll search for Las Vegas. And here I see just one result, but on the map, we see all the results. So the results of the map have not been updated. So I will have to add the available URL params in the locations path. So we have distance and we have place. So going back here, I will pass in format. I will say place equals params 
place and distance equals params distance. I will uh, refresh and you see now we have just this one location. Here let me search for another city, Nice. Here I have one location. I will search for Cannes. I have three locations. I'll search within 100 kilometers. And I have uh, four locations within 100 kilometers. And now our map gets updated based on our search. So that's really it for now. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.